Hi, my name is Kaylin Deanna Keeper. I'm from Little Grand Rapids. I'd like to say my story began when I was two, um, being in, diagnosed with cancer at the age of two years old, going on to three. I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And there were times like, where I was like in and out of the hospital constantly. Um, ended up using my own bone marrow. And then by the age of six, I was in remission. And that's when I began to be in foster care. Um, I guess just because I was so sick as a kid, my mom didn't have enough to provide for me and herself and my two other siblings. Um, she was struggling financially, and she was also struggling mentally and physically. At that age, I didn't really know that I was in foster care. I just thought I was... They just told me that my mom was sick and couldn't take care of me, and that she just wasn't capable enough to raise me on her own. And somehow, like, I kind of figured that it was because of her drinking, just because of how much I was exposed to it through family visits. Um, and also during the times, too, she was a drug addict herself. And it was kind of hard for me as I grew up, because the more I saw what she was doing, the more I understood. It impacted me a lot because I knew if I would have said something, it would have... In my head, I would have thought that I was probably never allowed to see her again. And I didn't want that. So I just, most of the time, I just kept my mouth shut. Um, and then the times where she had even offered me at 12 years old to do it with her was shocking because she was obviously under the influence, but again, it's just, I guess the trauma that she kind of put on me from that age to where I began actually exploring it myself, and that wasn't until I hit grade six, so 13. A friend who I thought was a friend had introduced me to cocaine, and that wasn't until the summer before grade nine, so that was going into high school, um, and that's when I fully became like dependent. I didn't care about my family. I didn't even love myself at that time. I just I wanted something to just help me forget about all my trauma that I experienced throughout as a kid, um, throughout as like early teens. Uh, like it became just really bad by the time grade 12 came around. And I remember looking at a photo on my phone, realizing like I just looked nothing like but skin and bone. And then that's when I really started to consider on getting help. And so by the time February came around is when I told my social worker like, hey, I need help. My Addiction is like getting worse and he had no idea that I was like using so it was a pretty sh big shock to him as well as to um, I guess the rest of CFS um, And yeah, and I ended up going to Aurora Recovery Center From February 26th to April 5th and I got out on my birthday after coming out of rehab, I had relapsed not even four hours after coming out. And on April 8th is when I actually overdosed for the, well, for the first time, where I flatlined for a few minutes. I don't know, she took something. 
you okay? didn't necessarily open my eyes because I still kept using afterwards. And then I think it was April 17th, I used too much to the point where it made me overdose again. And then, yeah, again, that didn't stop me after I got out of the hospital um, the next morning. I overdosed again, but during that time, I was also attempting suicide. And from what the workers were telling the operators on the phone was that I was just like, I was basically crying out for help. I needed help. So my worker was quick to act and got me as like into my culture, um, got me into like sweats and ceremonies. Um, and honestly, it just it kind of turned my perspective on, I guess, life in general. Even after the fact of overdosing three times and almost lose, losing my life for a few minutes. I, I don't ever want to experience that. I don't want any other people around me to ever experience that. Yeah, and I even realized like, even now that I'm choosing to be sober, I've realized a lot. Um, I've learned to make actual friendships with people that really do care um, that really do support me, that really do love me, and just want the best for me. And honesty really, really changed me. Um, <laughs> the first person I ever told about my addiction was my older sister. And the love she gave me from me telling her that I was doing this, I was doing that, she didn't turn me away, which made me feel like loved for once because I was finally free. I didn't have to hide it anymore. There's no more lying, there's no more closed doors. And again, it's like honesty, being truthful to yourself knowing that you have a problem you can fix it it's just it all depends on you it all depends on you getting help no one else can can't do that for you and i just hope that like kids that do struggle with addiction i just hope that they understand that that there is hope